Welcome everyone to the introduction of art. Uh, my name is Cody and I'll be your instructor for today and I'm going to show you how to draw stuff. But the basic things to start off. A lot of misconceptions that people have about art is that you need the fancy tools to be great. Trust me that doesn't, that doesn't mean anything. I was that way as well and then eventually I learned it was how you use the tool and not necessarily what tool you use. So obviously everybody knows you can draw something with a pencil, that's what most people draw. Um, you can also draw things with crayons, you'd be amazed at what you can do with a crayon. But today's lesson I'm going to show you how to use a pen. I know, you can't erase. Terrible, but you'll be fine. So, what I'm gonna do now is gonna demonstrate to you some drawing practices that I like to use. Uh, maybe some warm ups you can use before you start drawing. Don't worry about drawing the great pictures just yet. For now, we're just gonna focus on some simple shapes, um, how to shade with a pen, and a couple of things that you can use for this lesson. Now, let's get started. So, I'm probably gonna adjust the camera over time so you can see things a little bit better. But as you can see, all I have is a general, regular old piece of paper, nothing too fancy. You don't even need a paper this big. You can even get something a little bit smaller. But just to show you how to do stuff, I'm gonna use this paper. So one of the first things that you should do when you draw, I'd be lying if I said I do this all the time because I don't, but is to warm up. What warming up does, it allows you to get comfortable with drawing lines without being too stiff about it because just like dancing or any other art form, the looser you are, the easier it is for you to produce certain lines. So a couple of the things I want you to keep in mind when you are using something like a pen specifically is try to be as fluid as possible and one of the things that's going to help you do that is using your whole arm as opposed to just using your wrist because I know a lot of us draw that way and you'll notice that it's easier to draw longer lines with that. So I'm going to try to draw in a way to where it's easier for you to see what I'm doing so I'm just going to zoom in a little bit hopefully get you a good angle right boom focus up a little bit and boom. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to draw a line from one side of my paper to the other side of my paper. Um, which direction you turn the paper, completely up to you. I have mine in portrait mode at this point, but you can do whichever line you prefer. Now the first line I want you to draw, I want you to draw it as hard as you can with whatever medium you're using. Um, but we are using a pen. Don't cheat yourself. We're using pen. And I'm going to draw this line, keep in mind using your whole arm. Don't worry about if it's a straight line or not. You just want to get a line that cuts across the whole paper. As you can see, my line isn't perfectly straight. That's okay. We're not worrying about all that straight line stuff for now. We're just getting used to getting one fluent line across the paper. And so now what you're going to do is continue to create lines going down your paper as evenly spaced as you possibly can. This is another practice that you'll find judging spaces without trying to measure it. It's also a good practice for your eye. So just keep going down your paper. I'm going to create maybe like six lines going completely across the direction of my paper as evenly spaced as I can possibly make it. And as you'll see, it's a lot harder than it seems to get your line to be as spaced out as you can make it. I'm not worrying about it being perfect. And just one more. Boom. So as you can see, there's some work I need to do on like here. So I'm going to circle that like, whoo, that could be a little bit better. Um, but generally, they're like, you know, evenly enough spaced. So what this kind of does is helps you just get loose with your arm motions. Another thing you can do to help you create more of a, uh, I guess, a warm up is drawing like circles. So I'm going to turn my paper this way. Use all of your paper. Don't waste materials because, yeah, I, I do that a lot. So I'm not going to tell you to do it. You can draw things like little circles. Let me give you a new sheet of paper. Why not, right? I'm gonna use the back just to demonstrate. I'm not wasting it, I'm just using the back. Um, so you can draw little circles. Don't worry about it being a perfect circle, but keep in mind, you wanna use your whole arm. This is only a warm up. It's not about making it look pretty just yet. We're just worried about getting used to our tool because I know a lot of us haven't really drawn with a pen. Is that focus? Is that in, is that in line? It's in line, all right, cool. So I'm just drawing little circles, not worrying about how perfect it looks. I'm just trying to get loose so I can do my drawing adventure. So you can do these two exercises as many times as you like, and then we can go on to the next step. Bloop. Now that you are all warmed up in all that lovely th thing, 
what we're gonna do now is start to get used to creating like actual shapes with your tool. In this case, it's gonna be our pen. Um, so what I'm gonna start off with first is squares because I know it's probably one of the easier shapes to draw. But keep in mind from the last exercise we did, drawing things to be as evenly spaced as we can and being as loose as possible like we did with our circle exercises. What I want you to do now is try to draw some squares as, we draw the squares with as little sketch lines as possible. What I mean by that is, let me zoom in for you so you can really see what I'm talking about. Boom, ignore my circles. But instead of trying to sketch in your squares like a lot of people normally would, like I do sometimes myself, instead of trying to like sketch it out like this, as they call it like a sketchly approach, I believe. Instead of trying to do it like that, try to draw your square in like one line approach. Trying to make it as even as you can. And as you see, that's all right, could be a little better. So if that, I'm just gonna keep doing that. What this is doing is training your eye not only to try to make the lines of six, as you can see, this one's a little bit longer, that's getting more rectangular, but this is just training your eye to get used to creating the line the correct way the first time around, as opposed to having to sketch it in. For something like a pen, it's very important to try to be um, precise with your lines, considering a pen, you can't really erase, but there are ways to go around this step, and I will show you that now. So. Now that we've had a warm up, we've drawn a couple of squares and all these fancy things, now you're wondering how do we actually use the pen to build on good drawings. One of the most important things to know about drawing, no matter what tool you want to use to get your sketch down, is knowing how to draw lightly. Drawing lightly is what allows you to not only build value on your drawings, but it also allows you to be a little bit more looser with your sketches so you don't have to sit down and get real refined too early. Because like I said, this is just the beginning. We don't want to overthink it too much. Remember that whenever you get frustrated, don't overthink it, just flow and let it go. That was a good one. Um, so that, what I'm gonna do now is I'm going to continue with using shapes. Now we're gonna go into more three-dimensional shape drawing. Building off of the square, we're now gonna go to a cube. And I'm gonna show you how to draw a cube starting with a light sketch first and then building value on top of that. So, now that we're here to draw three-dimensional shapes, here's the importance of drawing lightly. So let's say you aren't really comfortable with drawing lines, just one line and going that way. And you want to work up to it by creating still some sketch lines to like build your form. One of the things you can do to utilize that and not show so much is drawing light. I'm going to try to show this as best as I can because I have gotten used to drawing lightly. Um, one of the things I like to do is not apply as much pressure. So a couple of practices you can do is just like before, draw the line as dark as you can in the beginning. And in creating five lines following this, I want you to try to make it as gradual, make it a gradual reduction in pressure until you get to the lightest shade you can possibly get. So this is the darkest for me. And then this would be like, you know, gradually getting lighter and lighter as I go. And you still want the line to be connected, but you want it to be just light. And as you can see, it's almost like a gradient. You can even barely see it on the camera. So I'm gonna try to zoom in a little bit more for you, right? I don't know if you see that very well, right? It's kind of dark here, boop, and then gradually gets lighter. So you can even pause the video, practice this a couple of times until you get it to look as gradual as possible. So now once you got your practice in on drawing from dark to light or from light to dark. In this case, what we're gonna do now is we wanna start our sketch with the lightest line possible. It's so light you can barely even see it on camera, but with the lightest line you can possibly draw, that's how we're gonna draw our square. I'm gonna draw mine fairly big, but you don't have to draw yours big. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna first try to draw it lightly with one line first, drawing our cube, I should say. So I'm going to draw my cube, starting off with a square first. All right, adding in a square, a little more rectangular. But you know, this is why drawing lightly is beneficial because it allows you 
to build on your form. I'm still trying to use as little lines as possible, but I'm still sketching it in. You can kind of see it, right? So if you're not familiar with drawing a cube, I believe in you. Use your imagination. It's not that bad. I'll uh, you know, challenge you with that one. But um, so the another thing that when drawing a cube is perspective, but we'll learn that in another day. But what I'm gonna do is build on my cube form from this direction so it fits on the paper, but I'm still drawing lightly, trying to keep everything in frame. All right, drawing lightly, just trying to work out my shapes, trying to do it in as little bit of shapes as possible. And if it's not perfect the first time around, that is A-OK, -okay, because as you can see, my cube isn't that perfect either, but it gets the job done. So now when I sketched out all the lines for my cube, now is where I can start adding value to it. So let's say this was something like drawing a face. So if I were to raise my little bench here, do, 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 do. So if it's something like drawing a face and this was like the guidelines for it, I'm sure we all saw how Drawing a face is kind of like an oval. If I take my time and draw out all the lines of a face and make it really light, if I go back now and start adding the details on top, well, specifically with a pen, even if there is still some sketch details in it, you'll find that it will kind of get lost in the background with the deeper values. And yes, my face isn't that great. Don't judge me, we'll get there. Um, but as you can see, the darker you go, the less you even see those sketch lines. But if you get close up, I mean, let's put him with like a nice, nice little hair. Yeah, put some ears on him, why not, right? Some eyeballs and all that stuff and a face shadow, boom. So as you can see, if I hold it up a little bit close to the camera for you, zoom that in, yeet. Even though you can tell there's still some sketch lines, the darker lines kind of let everything fall into the backdrop. And that's what's one of the major benefits of starting light first allows you to do, especially when you can't erase. It's very beneficial to have it fall into the backdrop, but when you can, it makes it a lot easier to get rid of it. So now once I have my general outline of my cube in there, what I'm gonna do next is start to add deeper values. I'm just gonna jump in from my lightest value to my darkest value. <clears throat> but if you wanted to, you can continue to build your lines or your line weight as they call it until you get to a comfortable uh i guess a comfortable value you want so you can kind of sketch it in like that or you can do our original technique of trying to draw it as dark as you can and make it as straight as you can but all of this is practice um so if it's not perfect the first time around that's okay this is why we practice. And don't get discouraged because drawing with pen is, it took me a while to kind of get comfortable enough to where I wasn't really too worried about how perfect it looked. I just wanted to get something down. And as you can see, you can barely tell that the sketch lines are there. But when I get closer, let me focus that. When I get closer, you can see they're like sitting all in there, right? Looking all fancy and stuff. Now that we have, we warmed up, we've drawn some lines to get loose. We've also drew squares to get used to drawing the line we want the first time around. And we also learned how to build value and expand on the square to making it a cube. And like I said, if you're not comfortable with a cube, um, that's one of my homework for you is just getting used to perspective because we are gonna cover that next. We're still gonna be using a pen, of course, because you know, why not? But with all of these tools of just um, building on value and exercising, just being more confident with your pen, your pen marks is gonna help you build the confidence to like draw full on pictures only using pen. I've done it a couple times. I wanna put a picture of it in here, like now. This is a drawing I've done with only pen. It's very possible to like only draw a picture with pen. Um, after we have all of these things within our grasp, 
The next thing that you're probably wondering is how would I go about adding value to my arts? 